Hello, good evening, and thanks for watching the news on Times TV. I'm Chisomuchi Hana. First, the headlines. HRDC demands a detailed expenditure report on 6.2 billion kwacha meant for the fight against COVID-19 in the country. The Malawi Local Government Association, MAGA, asks for extra funds to effectively respond to COVID-19. A recent assessment by the Ministry of Health at Mzuzu University finds 26 out of 522 COVID-19 tests positive. We have these and other stories. Stay with us. The Human Rights Defenders Coalition, HRDC, is demanding that the government, through the Department of Disaster Management Affairs, DODMA, furnish the public with a detailed report of how funds amounting to 6.2 billion kwacha for the fight against COVID-19 in the country have been utilized. This follows reports which the coalition says it has been receiving pertaining to the use of the funds. HRDC's National Chairperson Gift Trapens, while applauding the government for its efforts in fighting the pandemic, notes that there is a lack of accountability through provision of expenditure reports. There is mixed information that is coming in terms of how the government uh, has used the funds. So it is important uh, for the government to be accountable, also to be clear with the information. That is why HRDC has written dogma uh, so that they release that information. And Malawi want to know in terms of how they have used the 6.2 billion. We have information that, uh, uh, like for example, in the north, um, they said that they were patrolling the borders. But uh, some people are saying that this, the borders of Song and Kipa were uh, patrolled in July last year. Uh, so people are asking in terms of um, uh, if they are talking about uh, spending money on patrols in terms of um, keeping the uh, pandemic, uh, then how have they used these, these funds if they are not patrolling the north? So these are the questions that the government should encouragement, encouragement that um, uh, we have uh, a citizenry that is very uh, awake, a citizenry that is very alive, and a citizenry that is certainly is sharing uh, the values that we have. You know, we are the first alliance government and uh, we believe in doing things together with all our citizens. So a uh, part of that is uh, uh, ensuring that uh, we explain how we are using public resources. And nobody should be faulted about this. This is very important. And we will do it, well, once again, let me say, we will do it not because um, uh, we are being pushed or there is pressure. No, we will do it because we believe in it. We'll do it because this is important. We'll do it because that's how things must be. So certainly, uh, uh, the, the, all the resources will have to be uh, accounted for. Acting Executive Director of the Malawi Local Government Association, Marga Hadrod Zerum Kandawire, has asked the central government to provide extra funds to the councils in order for them to effectively respond to COVID-19, especially the enforcement of preventive measures. MARGA is an independent umbrella body of local councils. He says the extra funds will enable councils to distribute masks as well as implement COVID-19 awareness campaigns. He, however, commended the central government for the one billion kwacha dispersed to the councils. He explains more to our reporter, Rebecca Chimjeka. We have also noted that um, that fund does not have allocation for logistics in terms of how the, uh, the masks will be distributed. And it therefore follows that uh, the councils will have to meet uh, uh, the logistics uh, 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 costs. In this case, it means uh, the councils will have to go to other allocations of other um, uh, uh, budgets to fish out the, the logistics, which in, in the end may also bring some other complications. Um, at the same time, we also like to urge the local authorities, the, the local councils, to ensure that um, they comply with the Public Finance Management Act uh, in how these masks will be, pro, uh, will be procured. And at the same time, I understand there is a directive that these masks should be procured locally. 
uh, um, so that the medium and small, small and medium enterprises should benefit and we also urge the councils to ensure that this is at the top. The National Organization of Nurses and Midwives of Malawi and Association of Malawian Midwives have requested government to allow nursing and midwifery colleges to continue with their program activities for final year students during the next two weeks of closure. President of the Association of Malawian Midwives, Keith Lipato, said most final year nursing students are expected to complete their studies in two weeks so that they can contribute to the much needed human capital in the fight against COVID-19. He explains. We are really pleading with the government at least to consider health-related training institutions not to close for the next two weeks, especially those colleges that have got uh, students that are only remaining with uh, two weeks before they write their final year exams. The workforce uh, for nurses and midwives on the ground is not adequate at the moment, and we don't know how far, how soon this COVID-19 issue will be resolved. So we would rather have nurses and midwives on the ground than, you know, extending holidays for final year students. Health workers, nurses and midwives have been severely affected. If you go across Malawi, almost each and every hospital, you have nurses and midwives. Some have actually died. Some are actually on isolation and some are on quarantine. Therefore, it is very important that we have to graduate as many nurses as possible so that they're able to fill up the space, the vacuum, left by their colleagues that have been infected or affected. The Lilongwe Bar Owners Association has written President Lazarus Chakwera through the Office of the President and Cabinet to consider adjusting the time within which their businesses can operate. COVID-19 rules and regulations allow bars and other social joints to be open from 2 o'clock in the afternoon to 8 o'clock in the evening. But the group secretary Marvin Mugana said the stipulated time has had a negative bearing on their financial muscle. Since the implementation of these restrictions, uh, with the law enforcing enforcement agencies coming to the places and do their job, business has really dropped almost by 80%. So technically what it means is within no time the bars and nightclubs will begin to close down and will begin to lay off some of the staff. So right now, uh, just the Longwe City only employs around 16,000 employees who have their families, maybe on average of five people in a family. So all those people are going to suffer and we are also going to suffer. So this is what has driven us to pen to the state president. To A recent assessment by the Ministry of Health of Coronavirus Tests at Mzuzu University in Mzuni has found that out of 522 tests, only 26 were positive, representing 5%. University Registrar Yuna Mwira has told Times that it is up to the Ministry of Health to interpret the sample of the test outcome and advise on the way forward. COVID-19 has extended the closure of schools for two weeks and said we continue monitoring the situation. Meanwhile, Nguida has said the university is in the process of building capacity to offer emergency remote teaching through e-learning method. Nguida said a number of training workshops have been lined up to train trainers and online learning module platforms have been developed, which some of the open distance learning courses are already using. The registrar also said the university is in the process of upgrading its ICT infrastructure on campus and in all its satellite learning centers to enhance distance and e-learning. The university has also expanded the bandwidth of the internet and plans to equip staff with modern ICT gadgets. Student Union President John Gonabamuhanya Gondwe recently said it is high time for the university started e-learning for all programs, especially as cases of COVID-19 are still on rise. Nzuzu University has over 9,000 students. This is Times News and we'll be back after this break.
For a better tomorrow, don't forget to do the one, two, three with Colgate every night. As we work hard every day to serve our customers and grow our business, one thing should always come to mind. You cannot do business without your customers. COVID-19 is amongst us and is quickly claiming the lives of our loved ones. As part of our corporate social responsibility, we have decided to forgo our part of revenue on Safe Hands Premium Hand Sanitizer to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Safe Hands Premium Hand Sanitizer is now available at Metro, Spa, People Supermarket in Lilongwe, Blantyre, Zomba, and Mzuzu. Safe Hands Premium Hand Sanitizer comes in 5 liters. Beat the coronavirus. Use Safe Hands Hand Sanitizer. Ethco. That's the spirit. If there's one thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From packets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. <laughs> all soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. Its reinvented formula with flaxseed oil boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Protex! Good health starts here. Welcome back. On Fridays, the streets of the country's major cities are usually packed with underprivileged people who go out to beg. Isaac Salima sought to find out what is so special about begging on a Friday and he files this report. Limbe Township is always busy on daily basis with business activities. But on Fridays, it is even busier, not only with businesses, but also with people from various areas who come to beg for arms. Why Fridays? Let's find out. Stories continue being told about street begging. Concerns have been raised about dangers brought by children who beg in the streets. Government plans are currently underway to relocate the street beggars. But that is not our focus today. We are in Lilimpe Township to find out why most underprivileged people consider Fridays as begging days. We first met these three women who are in their advanced ages. On this day, they strategically positioned themselves outside the fence of Kanjeza Cemetery and Mosque. They say they come to the place every Friday to beg for Muslims and other people of Asian origin who come to pray and also pay respect to their departed friends and relatives. Gogo Mary Chiromoni walks a distance of about 20 kilometers from Nguru Mission every Friday to care of her grandchildren who are orphans. This is all because of poverty. Right now I am keeping my late sister's children, so it is this situation that took me here. Mary Balala came from Baraka district. She is physically challenged and a mother of three. She sleeps on the veranda of shops. She says Fridays are ideal days for her because most Muslims and Asians give a lot on this day. Around the Limbe Mosque, the beggars, most of them the elderly, sit outside the entrance. Others move around the shops and the streets to beg. A shop assistant told us that on Fridays, they can receive around 50 beggars. One of the Asian businessmen, Abbas Panjwani, said they consider Fridays as blessed days, hence giving out to the poor. And for the Muslim community, for the Muslim faith, Friday is a blessed day. And as is the case in other religions, for example, the Christianity, Sunday is a blessed day. So on the blessed day, you get more reward for the good deeds you do. Much as it is necessary, to keep begging in the streets, it is apparent that most of the people are not in the streets by choice. If you and me join hands in helping the needy around us, Fridays 
who will cease to be begging days. Mayor from Zuzu City, Kondwani Brian Yasulu, has accused the Tobacco Commission TC of sleeping on its job and letting companies plunder protected forest for curing tobacco. Yasulu has described it as, a dis as disheartening that vehicles continue to carry wood from trees that have been cut in protected forests in the northern region heading to the central region for flu for flu cured tobacco production. The TC board chairperson Harim Kandawide says the commission regulates all companies that are involved in tobacco farming to restrain them from plundering the forest. Sam Kalimira reports. Nyasuru said some vehicles that carry firewood for flu cured tobacco production are spotted in areas such as along Vipia plantations and Perekezi Forest Reserve, heading to Central Region. The mayor said he suspects that the firewood is used by farmers in districts such as Kasungu, Nchisi, Nchinji, Doa, and Dirongwe, where, according to him, many people grow fruit cured tobacco. The mayor then said the Tobacco Commission should be serious and set up strict policies to make sure that companies involved in flu cured tobacco production do not use indigenous trees. It is uh, um, this big business by the tobacco companies. Uh, the flu cured tobacco is being fueled by the trees from the north. Um, I think this is without. Uh, maybe um, uh, giving a, a very, very big example. If you travel uh, towards uh, uh, the long way, you see all these trucks packed all over. Uh, they have cut most of those trees to go and fuel their tobacco. And this is the thing that I think the government needs to, we need to look into. But Tobacco Commission Board Chairperson Harem Kandavide said the Commission already regrets companies that are in flu cure tobacco production on issues of environmental conservation. Kandavide said such companies and individuals are advised to plant and manage their own woodlots where they can cut trees for curing tobacco. The board chairperson, however, said the commission will improve their patrol activities to ensure that forests are not depleted by tobacco farmers. According to data from the Minister of Agriculture, the central region has more farmers who grow tobacco in comparison with other regions. Some regional committee members and other supporters of the Democratic Progress Program the Democratic Progress Congress, DPECO, have announced that they have dumped the party and joined Alliance for Democracy, our fraud, led by, led by the then regional governor, Thomas Mbonda. The members say they want to help revamp our fraud, adding it is the only party that promotes democracy. Sam Kanimira reports. The members, a majority of whom were regional committee members, said they have decided to join a fraud because the party respects democracy. The then regional governor, who was also veteran wing president for the party, Thomas Mapunda, says a fraud has demonstrated real democracy by, among other issues, accepting even people who had previously been insulting the leaders. Mapunda said they have joined a Ford fully and their role will be to help set the ground for the party. We managed to promote the people countrywide. And I have my fellow regional governors countrywide. Well, we sat down and we decided we saw it worthy to go back to the party which brought back, which brought democracy in Malawi and that is a Ford. And uh, in Malawi, we have always seen that in politics, most parties have been uh, estate, personal estates for other people. When those people fail, the parties end. The leaders were not available for comment, but a Ford president in Obshihana said people are joining the party because they have realized that it is the only party which values democracy. 
Chihana said the party's National Government Council has agreed that all party leaders at regional, district and consuelo levels should leave the door open for people to join the party. Recently, the party announced that it has suspended gatherings to welcome new members in the party as a measure of preventing the spread of COVID-19. The party also suspended its planning for a convention this year due to the pandemic. In international news, President Joe Biden challenged Russian President Vladimir Putin on Thursday to release opposition leader Alexei Navalny immediately and without condition in a stock break from his predecessor. The Kremlin has rejected what it described as an ultimatum from Biden, as well as diplomatic correspondent Cindy Sane reports. The world watched this week as a Moscow court sentenced Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny to additional two years and eight months. In the days of the United States rolling over in the face of Russia's aggressive actions, interfering with our elections, cyber attacks, poisoning its citizens are over. Biden said the United States will not hesitate to raise the cost for Russia. In Moscow, Putin's spokesperson called Biden's comments aggressive and unconstructive. Any hints of an ultimatum are absolutely unacceptable to us. We have already said that we won't listen to such patronizing statements. We will not do it. Former U.S. Ambassador to Russia Michael McFowl says the poisoning and subsequent arrest of Navalny will make it virtually impossible for the Biden administration to have normal diplomatic ties with Moscow. I happen to believe that Mr. Putin likes uh, to have the United States as an enemy. I think that he thinks that's useful for him for his domestic politics. Navalny has mocked Putin and documented his corruption saying the Russian president will go down in history as Vladimir the underwear poisoner. Steven Zastanovich says Putin takes the opposition politician with deadly seriousness. Navalny is mounting a kind of challenge that Putin hasn't faced in a long time, uh, which is to say uh, demonstrations across Russia in more than 100 cities, uh, across age groups, uh, with a, an increased focus on the corruption of the regime. Sestanovich says going forward, Putin may factor in pushback from the Biden administration in deciding how to treat Navalny and the protesters he inspires. Cindy Sane, VOA News. And that's the news for now, but before we go to the headlines once again. HRDC demands a detailed expenditure report on 6.2 billion kwacha meant for the fight against COVID-19 in the country. The Malawi Local Government Association, MAGA, asks for extra funds to effectively respond to COVID-19. And a recent assessment by the Ministry of Health at Mzuzu University finds 26 out of 522 COVID-19 tests positive. You can get more on these and other stories by visiting our website www.times.mw on our facebook page at times 360 malawi and on twitter at times 360 malawi remember to wash your hands regularly observe social and physical distance and mask up please stay safe i'm chisomo chihana have a good night <laughs>
ndi pamene timapasana matenda amenewa komaso ngati amene kuli kothekera koma ndikomba no sopena kuti ale chikwina kukhala kothekera kuti tizivala izi zomwe zomati chingisa kukamwa ndi kumphono pachizungwa komati mamasiki ubwino sopano zimeza bwera pano anthu ambira komaso ka kukhama mamasiki abwino ndi tiwambiri ifesi tikhoza kusokesa mamasiki imene chimene ubempha chimene chotena kuti matenda amenewa ineyo anandigwira ndipo matenda ndi oopya kifuka masokoneza umoyo wa munthu ndi thanzi lake e komaso thupi mundi thumma poiteka kwambiri kulephera kupuma ndizina zote zopsha kwambiri zimene maona maloto sakharabu inoso umangulota zinzosokonekera ndiyeno ine ndikupemphani kuti amati mulungu wa ndichitira chozizo chabwino modi pano panda kozekera kukapelekera umboni mulungu wathu wabwe amen takambani basi sokole eh ndakhanduka pempera ndikiphona chipona ya mapepe kuti ada ndozo kuti ndisale kudya rasala aba abati tapira adozo kuti ndabasulidwa ndine mfulu moti ndisiye kumwa maya la vi mwachikhobiri mwachikhobiri basi ndokasiya basi eh ndakumba eh chikhobiri nchofunika kombiri eh koma tikwenera kuti ngapo kudindo kuchita boka anthu ino ndi Simungani nokuti chifukwa chakuti mumakhulupira munthu basi simudza maso madzi moyo wanonzi madzi ndi kusiya kumwa ma ARV ndi chimodzi modzi kusiya kumwa madzi koma alidwe nkhulupira ena munthu basina koma bidiza ndi kumwa ma ARV ma ARV ndofunika moyo wanu kubanjarani koma sochukira ya atsokole ndi bidiza kukhulupira munthu koma aso ndi bidiza kumwa ma ARV Utenga au akukupatsira nenda undo na wazaumoyo mogwirizana ndi cham ndithandizo lochokera ku Pepfar